Hey, what's going on guys? Today we are inside of Affinity Designer version 2 and we're going to take a quick look at the new Vector Warp tool in order to create ourselves a quick and simple mock-up using the picture of this mug on the screen in front of you. So what we want to do to get started is we're going to make our way over to the left hand side toolbar menu and we'll go and select our pen tool. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to trace around the outside of our mug and we're going to use that as a clipping mask to hold any image or illustration inside of that. So to get started, we'll go ahead and find our first edge and I'll just create a point right there. Come down towards the bottom just before I get to that corner. I'll go and create another one and just after the corner, I'll create another one as well and start to bend that. So this tutorial isn't going to teach you how to use a pen tool. I do have another tutorial for that if you guys want to go ahead and check that one out. This is really going to be quick and messy just to show you how it works. You guys are free to come back with the node tool after this and clean it up a little bit better if you want to get more precise with this. However, just to be quick with the video, I'm going to make my way around this image as quick as possible. So I'll just keep making a few more points and getting around this. Just bend that a little bit, come in the center there and just start to curve that a little bit to follow that same line. And just roughly get that to look good enough for the tutorial. And I'll just finish that bit right there. So that is perfectly fine. Just as a quick outline that we are going to use in order to nest anything inside of that. So like I said, if we zoom in just real quick, we do have these white gaps up here. If you do want to get a little bit closer, all you've got to simply do is make sure that you are on your curve over in your layers. Go over to the left hand side, select your node tool. And you can just come in here and create different node points by selecting that and just dragging that in and just find adjusting these little areas. If you want to get a little bit closer or neater, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to leave it the way it is just for this tutorial. So I'll just zoom back out with command or control zero to fit the screen and I'll move on with the tutorial. So what we want to do next is we want to bring in an image or an illustration inside of our mug. And just to be quick with the demonstration, I'm just going to use my logo over here on the left hand side. I'll just drag that over and I'll resize that to a rough size I'm happy with. And I'll just move that into place. So just so you guys can see this a little bit better, I'll go ahead and change the colors of this. So if I go over to my layers on the right hand side inside of my group, I'll go in here and just give this a different color so we can see that a lot better. And I'll do the same on the text. Then once we've done that, I can go ahead and close the group. Then what we want to do next is we want to be able to nest this inside of our curve that we have created or our clipping mask. And the way that we would do that in version two is we'll select that, we'll just pull that down and we'll just drop that right on top of that. And now you can see on the edges here on the left and the right, it's not going outside of our mug. It's not perfect. It does stick out a little bit there, but you guys can go back in and fine tune that if you want to pull that in a little bit using the no tool. So once we've got that out of the way, what we want to be able to do next, if I just zoom in, is we want to be able to see the shadows on our mug right here through our logo. And the way that we would do that is we'll go back over to the right hand side layers. We're going to select our curve and just up here next to the opacity, we have this option that says normal. This is going to be our blending modes. So inside of our blending modes, we want to choose multiply. And now you can see we can see that shadow through our logo as well. So I hit command or control zero just to zoom back out. Then what we want to do from here is start to bend this logo a little bit so it looks a little bit more authentic. So and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to first of all go inside of our curve and we'll select our group, which is going to be the logo. Then I just want to bring this up a little bit and line it up with these areas at the top here. It just makes it a little bit easier when it comes to curving it to make it look a bit more realistic. And I'll demonstrate what I mean just now. So I'm just going to drag that up and get that straight line roughly just before it starts to curve just up here. So I'll zoom in and just before I hit the curve right there, I kind of want that straight line going from that side over to that side. You don't have to do this. It's up to you. But once you've done that, what we want to do next is go over to our layers back over on the right hand side, go down towards the bottom to where we have our new warp tool inside of here. We have many different options that we can use in order to warp this. However, because I want to keep this tutorial at a beginner level and simple as a starting point, all we're going to do is just stick with a perspective option. I will, however, do some future tutorials where I do something a little bit more complex than this. 
with different types of mockups and we'll discuss some of these other options. But for now, we'll just go ahead and choose perspective. So once we chose perspective, all we've got to do is find the center point of this line, which is going to be roughly around there. So we just click and we're going to drag this up and we're going to kind of follow that same curve that we've got right there at the top of the mug. So that is a rough kind of bend that we are going for. So I'll just zoom out just a little bit using command or control plus or minus to zoom in and out. And I want to go and grab my move tool over on the left hand side. And I'm just going to drag this down towards the bottom, just kind of what I did before, just before I get to that corner. So I can just kind of follow that curve at the bottom. Then if I go back over to my left hand side toolbar menu, if I select that no tool, that's going to take me back into my warp option. Then once again, in the center of this, it's got to drag that down and just kind of follow that same kind of curve that we've got at the bottom of the mug. So somewhere around there will be perfectly fine. We'll go and grab our move tool. Then we'll just move this roughly where we want it. And I'm going to put that, I think, to around there. Then that is generally it in terms of getting the rough shape that we are going for. So what I really do love about this brand new feature is the fact that all of this remains completely editable. So we can go back inside of our warp group over in our layers. And I can go ahead and change the color of this if I want to. Maybe go for that dark red right there and do the same thing with the text. Change that to be the color red. And you'll notice right here at the bottom, this is still two different colors. And this is a glitch at the moment with Affinity's first version of version two. So hopefully in the next update, they will address this. But the way that we will fix this and get that to be in red is all you got to do is just zoom in and out. And there you go. That fixes that. So. In order to change this text, we can also do that as well by going back inside of our layers, making sure that we are on the text. Then we'll go back over to the left hand side toolbar menu. We'll select our text tool. And instead of having media, we can maybe change that to YouTube. And underneath, instead of having designs, we could have that as channel. And I'll just go ahead and grab my move tool again and come outside of that. And once again, with the glitch, we're missing some of the text at the bottom there. So if we just zoom back in and out, that will fix that. Once I've uploaded this video to YouTube, I will probably send an email to Affinity just to show them exactly what is going on with this. And hopefully they can address that with their next update. But in terms of creating a quick mock-up, it really is as easy as that. So if we just want to go ahead and delete our warp group that we just created, which is our logo. And once again, we've got the same glitch so just zoom in and out just to fix that. We still have our original curve that we created. So we are free to put anything else inside of here that you would like. So just to demonstrate that inside of my other project over here, I have an image of my little monster that I drew. So I'm just going to copy him. I'm going to come back over here and paste him in and I'm going to resize that roughly. And just drop that roughly around there. I want to cut off a little bit of the ear and the hand so we can see it curve around. Then over in our layers on the right hand side, on our curve menu, we still have the multiply affected on that because we didn't change it. So once we drop our monster on top of our curve, straight away we'll be able to see the shadows through the hand and the ear. And you are free to move that around inside of there and position that or resize that however you like. So just like before, I'm just going to move that roughly towards the top just before we hit that curve. Then I'm going to go back over to my layers on the right hand side down to our new warp option at the bottom. Once again, I'm going to choose perspective and I'm just going to drag that up in the center to kind of get that same curve that we've got at the top there. And go ahead and grab our move tool once again on the left hand side, drag that towards the bottom just before we hit that curve. So somewhere around there is fine. Go and grab our no tool once again to go back to our warp. And we'll just drag that down to get that same kind of curve that we got at the bottom. And once again, grab our move tool. It's going to bring him up to the center roughly. And just like before, it remains completely editable. So we can always go back over to our layers, go inside of our monster group. And I can just start changing things inside of here. Maybe the color of his body so I can make him orange. It's just really a case going through all of these different bits and pieces and just giving them all the same colors. So for now, I'll go ahead and hit command or control Z just to undo that and get back to how it was. So if you guys want to warp this a little bit more than what it is, all we've got to do is in our layers is double tap on our warp and we can add additional points along any of these lines as well. If you just want to go ahead and just really fine tune your warp, and that's going to be at the top as well as the bottom. And you can just start moving this around and just playing around with it to make it look a little bit more better or authentic. 
But as I wanted this to be a quick tutorial, I'm just going to leave it the way it was and give you guys a rough idea how this tool actually works. But looking at our little monster right here, we could definitely curve him a little bit better around the edges there. And that really is just a case of having to play around with your warp tool. But that is it for today's video. I hope you found it useful. If you did like the video, then please give me a thumbs up and give me a comment as that really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and helps other people find my content. If you guys would like to share any images that you created yourselves with me using this tutorial, then you'll find my social media links in the description and feel free just to tag me inside of those. And of course, please hit that subscribe button to check out all of my future videos that I will have coming over the next few months. And if you guys would like to support me and my YouTube channel on my journey on creating new content for you guys, then feel free to buy me a coffee using the link in the description as that really helps me out with finding a little bit more spare time with creating videos for you guys. But for now, I hope you have a great day and I will see you in my next video.